Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome to this episode of Not Treconomics. This episode is part two of three in a little animation project that I'm walking you through about how to do this sequence here, which is my take on a Star Trek warp bubble effect. To this animation, we're going to be adding some fog glow and blur effects to this, which makes I, this, this right now looks okay, but I think we can improve it with a few extra effects added to a couple of the materials and a couple of the little bit of the background. We're not going to be doing any, any lens flares because, well, frankly, J.J. Abrams has cured me of any desire to use them at all. So with that, let's do this. Okay, we are taking up where we left at the end of uh, part one of this series. If you have not watched that yet, please go and watch that first. There is a link below in the description. This will make a lot more sense if you do. In this episode, we are going to do the keyframing of all of this for the animation. It isn't hard, but it's a matter of kind of keeping straight the order in which you want everything done. So we're now on frame one. And this is our starting position, so we are going to select the cylinder, which is we're calling space-time. We're going to insert a single keyframe there on the y-axis. We're going to select the ship, insert a single keyframe on the y-axis for that. And we are going to select the camera. We are going to insert a single keyframe on the x-axis for that and the z-axis for that. And that is our starting positions for all of our objects. There are two more things that we have to do, though. On the sh Well, you don't have to do one of them. I have to do it because on my ship, if we go to the Materials tab, I have a number of materials. And you'll note that they all have different pass indexes on them. So if we go here to the hull and we scroll down and we click on Settings, you'll see that this is pass index 0. Let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and kill that to give me a little more maneuvering room. Okay, so that's going to be pass index 0. And if we come up here, we go to the bays. Those are pass index 1. If we go to the ship lights, those are pass index 2, and so on. And I have all different pass indexes, and what that'll do is give me the ability to apply different effects to different materials without affecting anything else in the scene. So that's uh, what I've got there for all of these. And of course, lastly, the Alcubi Air Drive is pass index 6. The other thing I need to do on the space-time cylinder, because we do need to apply some separate effects to, those, to, to that, click on space-time and go down and assign... I'm going to assign pass index 7 it doesn't matter what number you use. The idea is making sure that the numbers, that the materials you want to give an effect on, if you want the same effect, give them all the same pass index. So you can use the same numbers I'm using, even if you're not using the ship that I'm using in this video. So hit the uh, 7 key to give that the pass index of 7, and hit Enter, and then select the white hole, and give that a pass index of 8, or I'm going to do that. You can use any numbers you want, but if you want to use the same numbers I'm using, there they are, 7 and 8. So now we have everything pass indexed, and that way we will apply the different effects. Let's double check our scene settings. Make sure you have material index turned on anytime you use a pass index on something. So we have all that taken care of. So let's go to our materials for the ship, and we want to go to the ship first, and the engine exhaust. On frame one, we want to keyframe that at zero because in the warp bubble, the Alcubi air drive is the thing that's turned on. And in normal space, the uh, sublight engines in the rear of the ship are turned on. So we want to hit the I key to keyframe that at zero. And what we want to do now, let's go to numpad zero. And we will play this thing through until it, uh, whoops, hang on, we haven't animated the cylinder yet, so we can't do that, so we'll do that next. Go back to frame one, go to frame numpad seven, and what we're going to do is, one, I forgot we have to analyze, an, an, animate the cylinder first, can't talk today. The other thing we want to do, though, we want to get the Alcubi air lights on the ship, for the, get them in their frame one position here, so we'll select Alcubi air, and we want to keyframe that at 12. So hit I. 
Okay, so that's been keyframed there. Anything else we need here? Nope, we're all good. Okay, next thing we want to do, we've got that done. This doesn't need any keyframing yet, so we're okay. Very good. Okay, so that will take care of our material keyframing. Now we want to animate the cylinder. So select the cylinder here, and you want to go to frame 180. We want to we want well actually let's go to frame 300. We'll go ahead and set our end frame to 300. As I said, keeping it straight is key. So let me just make sure we do that. We're going to set that to 300 first. It'll be easier to see what we're doing if we do that. So go to frame 300. And you can do that just by clicking the end here. And at frame 300, we want the cylinder to move from 0 in the y axis to minus 30. So left click here, put minus 30, enter and then right click, insert a single keyframe, go back to the beginning, press play, and it's starting off slow, speeding up in the middle, and then slowing down at the end. Don't want that. So let's go back to the beginning, go into the graph editor, hit the home key to bring this into full view, hit the V key, and then click vector, and that gives this thing a linear interpolation, which works better for what we're doing. Go back to the 3D view, press play now, and the thing works at the same speed the whole way, right up through the end there, which is exactly what we want. So go back to the beginning here, and we want to go to frame 180. We want the ship to go past the camera. Let's zoom out here. We want the ship to go past the camera until the camera is at the trailing edge of the warp bubble, and this is how we're going to do the flyby. The camera is going to basically stay where it is, it's, uh, there's a couple other things we're going to do later where having the camera stay stationary helps, so we're just going to leave it the same place and move everything around the camera. So now we want to go in and select the ship. We've already keyframed it on frame one. And we want to move the ship to about 6.7 in the Y axis. So we will take it here and just go up here and, uh, whoops, go here and we will go 6.7. Enter, right click, insert a single keyframe, and let me zoom in here because I want to make sure that we are not outside that thing there. Okay, let's go, instead of 6.7, let's make that uh, 6.65 just to pull the camera in. Right click and replace single keyframe on that. Okay, so now if we go back to the beginning, and press play, you'll see the ship starts moving, and then it stops, and we're going to leave it going at the nonlinear interpolation there. And so that's working the way I want it there, so we'll go back to the beginning. So that takes care of the cylinder and the ship. Now we are going to select the camera, go to frame 180, select the camera, Go to numpad zero, and if we play this through numpad through the camera's view, if we do one play through that, okay, we have this like so, which isn't bad. But I want to take this back to frame 180 with the camera selected. Hit the G key, hit the Z key, hold the shift key down, and I'm going to move this up so we can kind of see. It's a little more visual interest on the top there with this ship than on the bottom, so I'm going to take that to like that. And you can just eyeball this. I'm not doing it. There are no precise numbers for this here. Then I'm going to hit the G and the X key, hold the shift key down, and let's move this over just a touch like that. Okay, so now we're kind of moving the camera along like that. Now let's right click here, insert a single keyframe, on the X location, insert a single keyframe on the Z location, and if we go back to the beginning now, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way here, and there we go. And go back to the beginning one more time, press play.
There we are. You know what? I'm going to go back to the beginning here, and I am going to take this camera, since we got it selected, I'm going to move this down just a tiny little bit here. Uh, let's go to numpad 3 so I can make sure I'm not intersecting the... Yeah, let's go ahead and grab the Z, hold the shift key down, and we just want to move this uh, shade lower here, get a little more movement to the upside as we're traveling by. There we go. Let's right click here, replace single keyframe, right click here, replace single keyframe. There you go. And now if we go to the beginning again, numpad zero. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. I actually want to raise that a little higher at the end here. So let's go to frame 180. And again, this is the fun part of this. You can kind of eyeball it here. So camera's selected. Hit the G, hit the Z, hold the shift key down. I'm going to move this up just a little more. Right click, replace single keyframe. Right click, replace single keyframe. And there you are, folks. Let's go back to the beginning, see how that looks. Yeah, I like that a little better. You get a little bit more movement that way, which is good. And I like that very much. So we're going to go ahead. I, you can play with this all day. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the beginning. We'll call that good and go to numpad 7. Now, the next thing we need to do, uh, go to numpad 0. Sorry, right, go to numpad 0. And we want to hit play here. And we want to go till just before this thing zips through that white hole. I think it's going to be around frame 233-ish, I'm thinking. Yes, 233 exactly, okay. Alrighty, so 230, 233, I, was, I knew it was somewhere in there. Okay, so at 233, we want to go to and select the ship. And we're in materials here, select the engine exhaust. And with that set at zero, hit I again, because we want it to stay at zero all the way through the warp bubble part of this. All right, the Alcubierre lights, with those at 12, hit I and keyframe those at 12, because we are, when they come out of this, they're going to gonna change, and we want them to stay that way until, they are ready, until we're ready to have them do it. So that takes care of that bit of animation for all of this. Now the next thing we need to do is when we come out of the warp bubble here, that's our white frame as we're flying through we are in for a couple of seconds because the camera is a little bit behind the ship, or a couple of frames because the camera is a little bit behind the ship. But as soon as we get out of the ship, we or get out of the, the uh, warp bubble, rather, as soon as we get out of the warp bubble, we want the Alcubi air drive to start turning off. So we could actually keyframe this. We're going to let we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, and so we want this to turn off. Oh, by the time, you know what, we'll leave that for the compositing. It'll be easier to set that up during compositing. But what we will do, we'll, we'll leave this where it is now because we have that ready to go. We'll, we'll save that for part three because that's more of a compositing thing than it is a material thing. So what we're going to do is we now want the ship to take off in at sublight speed. So we're going to go to numpad 7 to go to the top view here. And right as we get out of the, this is 233, so we're still in the warp bubble. So at 234, right as the ship emerges, we want it to take about one second, well, about, let's say about a half second to get going. So 234, 244, we'll just call it 250, right there. We want to go up here and insert a keyframe at 6.65. And then on 300, go to the end here, we want to take this up to 11. Right click and insert a single keyframe. So if we go back to the beginning here, what we're going to see, got the camera doing its thing. We get to the end of the warp bubbles a bit, and then the ship takes off in normal space. Okay, so that takes care of that. You know what, while I'm thinking of it, we may as well deal with the Alcubi air lights too, because... So let's go here to frame 233, 
And by frame 250, we want those at, oh, let's knock those down to two, something not too super bright, but not completely off. Right click and insert a keyframe. So they won't be completely off, but when they go, you know, and you've seen like on Star Trek or uh, the Orville, where just before they go to light speed, the, the back of the ship, the lights there get really, really bright, and then they just go zing and off they go. Well, when they come out, you would expect them to do the exact opposite and go back to some normal lower energy state. So that's what we're doing here with our Alcubi Air Drive lights. And we're going to use something similar with the uh, engine exhaust. So we'll go back to frame 233 and click on our engine exhaust. And now that we know where the ship is going to start, we want these to be, now let's see, about 15 frames after that. Well, let's see, 233, 263, let's, yeah, go 265 is good for that. And we want these engine exhaust lights to go to 20. And then right click and insert a keyframe. Okay, so that takes care of this. If you go to numpad zero, you'll see the lights are all the way on. You'll see the lights, the engine light, they're not lights, they're, you know, the engine exhaust is blasting away. We'll put fog glow and all the rest of it to make it look like real engine exhaust, but there you go. We're, we're faking volumetrics here. Okay, so that takes care of that. That we now have as our Yeah, see, and that takes off like crazy. As we get to 300, we go back to the beginning. This is our whole sequence. And there we go. And this will, this will adjust. It's not showing it in material mode because it only shows the current setting, but uh, it's the closest we have to real-time rendering until Blender 2.8 comes out. So. That takes care, let's go to numpad 7 here and see what we've got. So that takes care of everything we need for going into the compositor. All we need to do now is we need to get a frame that has, I want to set the, I want to use one scene to set the fog glow and blur effects, and I want to use another frame to set the lens distortion and blue shifting as you come out of warp speed for the very end of the video before the ship takes off. So we're going to do first, let's go to numpad zero. What we need for that is we've got to go to about frame 220. And the reason we're doing frame 220 is because I want the white hole and the engines in view, but you'll notice we have keyframed these to zero. So these, when we render this, they're going to be black and we want them to be really, really bright so we can put the fog glow effects on them. So Temporarily, I'm going to keyframe this frame to 20 on the strength for the engine exhaust. I'm going to hit that, make that 20. And I'm going to insert a keyframe, and then I'm going to render this frame. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, the render has finished, and before we take this into the compositor, we're going to go ahead and on the engine exhaust material strength, we are going to right click and we are going to delete that keyframe. Now if we go one frame back and one frame forward, you'll see this is back at zero, but we are, as soon as we hit our threshold frame that we set where we're, we're still, that keyframe is still there, so we will now just get, these will turn on when they leave warp speed. So let's go ahead here back to frame 220. And we are ready to take this into the compositor and do the final compositing and finish this thing up and then render the animation. So thanks a lot for watching. This concludes part two. May the balance of your day be awesome.